Hello, everyone. My name is Ole Kagan. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator with LA County Library, and I welcome you to explore artificial intelligence. To do that, our presenter is Connor Johnson. Connor is a MAKEMO or Maker Mobile Librarian, which means he goes around LA County doing STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math programs for folks of all ages at all sorts of places. So on any given day, you might find him at a school, a senior center, a park, a library, and on Zoom as he is here for you today to explore artificial intelligence. Connor, the stage is yours. Great. Thank you, Oleg. And good morning, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Oh, you know what? I'm going to share it optimizing for sound. Okay. Great. So we're good. All right. Again, good morning, everybody. My name is Connor Johnson. Um, today we'll be exploring artificial intelligence. So whether you know a lot about the topic or a little bit, um, I'm hoping that you know everybody will come away knowing um, at least some important aspects of AI and how it is affecting our world today. Um, so AI is a rapidly evolving technology. Um, it can evoke some uh, uh, passions, you know, a lot of different opinions. Some people might see it as our greatest threat, um, you know, humanity's greatest threat. Other people might see it um, as our best opportunity for the future. So I'm not here to steer you in any direction. I'm going to try to remain as objective as possible. Um, but there's a lot of interesting concepts. So let's, uh, let's jump right in. Um, there's a lot to unpack. So let's start by taking a look at some news headlines um, and how AI has been in the news recently. So the first news headline we're gonna take a look at, um, we can see lawyers AI blunder shows perils of chat GPT in early days. So if you're not sure what chat GPT is, that's okay. We're gonna be learning about it later and actually demoing it. Um, but for now, if you just know it's an advanced smart chat, a, a smart bot, um, is gonna, I'm sorry, a chat bot, a smart chat bot. Um, so you give a text prompt um, and it will give you a written response. So in this instance, um, this lawyer used ChatGPT for a legal filing and the chat bot software cited non-existent cases that it just made up. He turned that in, you know, and that wasn't, that wasn't good in the eyes of the judge. Um, so it's important to, to know that there can be inaccurate results. Um, the second headline, um, more artists are embracing artificial intelligence, not fighting it. Um, so it's looking at what AI generated art means for creativity. Um, can AI become the next Michelangelo? The article asks. Um, and all, all these um, news articles, you'll, you'll get a link to this presentation and you can look at these articles because um, some of them are really interesting and just have a lot more um, depth to them than I can uh, than I can explain here. So the next subline um, up at the top right we see EU and US lawmakers move to draft AI code of conduct fast. Um, so with AI just being just so kind of in a revolution at the moment, um, laws and regulations are lagging. Um, so there's a lot of non binding codes of conducts and ethical safeguards that are being discussed um, in the community and amongst lawmakers right now. Um, and we'll talk more about that as well. This final headline, um, it is a bit tongue in cheek, um, but the headline is in San Francisco, some people wonder when AI will kill us all. Um, the first key point there showing um, underlying all the recent hype about AI, industry participants are engaging in furious debates about what, how to prepare for an AI that's too powerful, that's so powerful can, it can take control of itself. Um, and the second key point I won't read, but it does um, reference the paperclip maximization problem. So you can keep that in mind. We'll be talking about that when we're talking about risks and ethical issues regarding AI. So we have a lot in store for you today. 
Um, first, we're going to go over what is artificial intelligence, um, some basic concepts and a brief history. Um, then we'll take a look at artificial intelligence today. And we're gonna focus on generative AI or using text prompts like with the chat GPT that we mentioned um, in order to create longer essays, um, images, presentations, anything um, smart content that can be generated. Um, then we'll be demoing some of those software apps, um, chat, the ChatGPT, Dolly for images. We'll take a, lo a look at Tome for presentations. Um, and then we'll look at uh, the risks and challenges. Um, and we'll just touch on those um, and take a look at the future of AI and um, maybe talk about some philosophical issues that arise. Um, and then finally, we will do um, go over some uh, further resources for further learning um, and do a Q&A at the end. So just a note, um, we're going to have to wade through a few tech heavy, a, a few tech heavy ideas. I myself am not a computer scientist or an AI expert. Um, you know, I'm a librarian, so I'm trained to research and figure things out. Um, but our, our goal is to make um, the topic today as accessible as possible. Um, but uh, if you have any any questions or anything needing clarification, we're happy to explain as best we can in that Q&A. So what is artificial intelligence? We might have a, a vague notion. Um, let's look at this definition from IBM.com. So it combines computer science and robust data sets to enable problem solving. It also encompasses subfields of machine learning and deep learning, which are frequently mentioned in conjunction with artificial intelligence. So this definition is also kind of vague and broad. Um, uh, so let's take a look at machine learning and deep learning, and we'll keep coming back to those particular concepts the rest of the presentation. So machine learning is all about training a computer to perform specific tasks like playing chess or interpreting x-rays. The training data that's used might be algorithms, statistical models, anything that's relevant to that particular task, um, anything that could help a computer learn and recognize patterns. So computers can learn and adapt and imitate uh, the way that humans learn gradually improving their accuracy over time and without having to follow explicit instructions. So some common applications of machine learning are Amazon recommendations, where it knows that you've purchased or looked at you know, products A, B, and C, so it's going to suggest D, E, and F. Um, we also see it in facial recognition software, looking for patterns you know, in between people's um, features um, to recognize and pinpoint um, uh, uh, facial um, recognition. And we see it in email spam filters. Um, you know, sometimes it's wrong and sometimes that important message that you need does go to the spam filter. So again, these, um, these concepts and these technologies are still evolving. Um, they're not foolproof yet. So then we have deep learning. So deep learning is a subset of machine learning. It teaches computers to process data in a way that is inspired by the human brain. So you don't have to know um, this uh, term, the artificial neural network, but that's what they're, uh, that, that's what deep learning is aiming to create. Um, these artificial neural networks are composed of multiple hierarchies and layers. Um, they can recognize complex patterns in pictures, text, um, sounds, and other data and then use those patterns to produce accurate insights and predictions. Um, it's a, that's a lot of, of words, um, but we can think of deep learning as a way for computers to have a better understanding of the world around, around them and the relationship between objects within the world. Um, an example of deep learning, uh, we can see in automated driving. So automated driving systems use deep learning to recognize um, and detect objects that may be in the way of a vehicle, um, like pedestrians. It can be taught to find traffic lights, uh, stop signs. So deep learning is, um, we can think of it as a, a way for computers to really understand the world, the way that people do, relationships and patterns between concepts. 
So a final basic concept of artificial intelligence uh, we're going to go over today is the idea of artificial general intelligence or AGI. So AI systems can be classified as either strong or weak. Um, strong or general AI um, is a theoretical system with broad person-like behavior that could perform any task or problem similar to how you or I could. Narrow um, or weak AI um, are confined to specific tasks, but they can perform those tasks really well, often better than humans. Um, and we see that with um, machines that have been taught to play chess um, or virtual assistants. So don't mistake weak for, for uh, the definition that we might think of as weak. Um, it's just a way to contrast between that theoretical framework of a strong artificial general intelligence. All forms of modern AI systems are classified as weak or narrow. We haven't reached that general intelligence. Um, and you might see that phrase AGI used a lot more coming up um, as also called super intelligent AI, um, things like uh, singularity. Um, it's not here yet. Nobody can say for sure whether it will ever be reached. Um, but it's something to keep in mind that, that there are computer scientists striving to reach the artificial general intelligence. So let's just take a look at a brief history of artificial intelligence. This is not an exhaustive history, um, but just some highlights over the years. So just starting um, by uh, making note that, you know, even early humans were fascinated with the idea of creating artificial life or self-operating machines. You know, in Greek mythology, um, there was a giant bronze automaton um, called Talos. And uh, we can see that as a precursor for both artificial intelligence and robotics. So, you know, the idea of anthropomorphizing um, inanimate objects and imbuing them with um, human-like qualities, you know, has been around, you know, forever in myths and legends. So our striving for these technologies is nothing new. We're just finally seeing a, a, a time and the ability to pursue artificial intelligence in a way that is now playing out in front of our very eyes. Um, and so the, the term art, artificial intelligence itself um, was coined in 1955 by computer scientist and Dartmouth uh, professor John McCarthy. Um, and he made it as, a, as part of a workshop where he invited people to see if they if computers could behave in a way that the people would determine was intelligent. Um, and then went on to found a research um, field at Dartmouth um, Artificial Intelligence the next year. Um, another highlight um, in the AI history um, in, 19, in 1966, um, we saw the world's first chatbot um, called Eliza. Um, she was developed by Joseph Weizenbaum at MIT. And she was developed to mimic human behavior patterns and respond with pre-programmed queries. Um, so again, the world's first chatbot chat all the way back in 1966. And then more recently, we might have um, seen uh, Deep Blue in 1997. That was the first AI construct to ever win a chess match against the reigning world champion. And then I remember watching Watson um, Watson uh, as a question answering computer that was um, known for competing on the quiz show Jeopardy. Um, and Watson really wiped the floor with the human contestants. It knew a lot. Um, they had to retire Watson. Um, although Watson is, is still around um, in doing my research, um, it was cool to see Watson has now been upgraded and is doing more than just question, question answering at IBM these days. So that's going to bring us to the field of artificial intelligence today. Um, and this is not an exhaustive list of, uh, of fields where artificial intelligence is being used. Um, you might be aware of, of some of them and others. You know, I, ha I, I had no idea that um, AI was being used. Um, and there's some examples in the medical field, um, you know, looking at x-rays and uh, being, being better than um, and then some doctors at, at recognizing diagnostic, diagnostic criteria for like lung cancer 
um, before before humans can recognize that trained you know human doctors. Um, so it's just ex exciting exciting things um, in the medical field for AI. Um, transportation we've mentioned self driving cars, education you know AI is being used in um, records management. Um, you know, providing support to students with disabilities, you know, entertainment, we see um, script writing, um, you know, there's a strike going on right now and talk about AI filling in for Hollywood writers. Um, are we to that point with AI where, where we can replace, you know, entertainment writers? I, I don't think so in the future. I don't know. Um, but we'll be talking about the displacement of um, people in the workforce. Um, as well in just a little bit. Um, in fashion, it's used to you know design outfits, um, style clothing, agriculture. Um, you know, there's a lot of work in weather uh, forecasting and looking for patterns um, to you know produce better crop yields. And this final one, creating smart content, that's kind of where we're gonna pivot to and we're gonna look at creating smart content and then uh, demo some smart content creators. So another word for this is generative AI, which is generating content. Um, so as we know, with, with our um, talk of machine learning, um, this generative AI systems are gonna be trained on large data sets. Um, this is a, a technical um, idea you don't have to be aware of large language models, but if you're looking into generative AI and you, you might see that, um, it just be aware it's something that uh, uh, works with language in order for these generative AIs to understand labels um, and what we perceive as, as, as language and, um, and what that means. And so with generative AI, um, we're using text prompts to turn, um, uh, to, I'm sorry, we're using text prompts to turn um, into longer essays, images, presentations. Um, and again, we'll be demoing these in just a few minutes. So you can see, see what I mean, talking about it, reading about it, um, you know, is very different, different than experiencing it. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons to using this generative AI. You know, it's time saving, it's cost effective. Um, you know, it makes content create um, accessible to, you know, what I have here is non-creative types. You know, you might, uh, be starting your own business and, and need um, some brochures or pamphlets or a logo and you know you're not creative so normally you know you might outsource or hire somebody but now you can uh, generate that yourself using free AI systems you know which is which is great for you um, but again with the displacement of jobs um, that's something that we need to keep in mind that we'll that we'll touch on um, shortly and then um, that's one of the cons is job displacement. Um, these machines um, and these systems still aren't perfect, so we often get unrealistic or inconsistent results. Um, we'll definitely see that with um, some picture generation, um, you know, inaccuracies, um, those ethical issues um, that we'll get more into. So chat GPT, um, we've mentioned it a few times, if you remember um, the lawyer who used it for um, uh, a legal filing. Um, it was full of inaccuracies. Um, but the uh, ChatGPT uh, is an AI chatbot. It was developed by OpenAI and it auto, auto generates text and interacts in a conversational way. Um, and again, we know by machine learning that it's powered by large amounts of data um, to make predictions to string these words together. Um, so when we're talking about the large language models from the last slide, that's that's basically what they're doing um, is they're predicting what words are going to come next by looking at other, you know, tons of tons of past data. We can see here that it was trained on 175 billion parameters of learned data. So you can really um, specify how you want your written content to come out uh, resembling, you know, if you want it to be more uh, um, more specific or, or geared towards um, certain audiences. And we'll see that in just a couple minutes when we demo this software. Um, so right now, um, the free version of ChatGPT um, 3.5 was released to the public last November. 
And that kind of kick-started like um, a lot of this generative AI, um, a lot of other um, uh, tech uh, tech businesses um, and tech people kind of have jumped on board and created their own um, smart chat bots and other generators. Um, so it's a it's kind of a, a turning point in the field. Um, and then the the paid version of ChatGPT, um, which is Ch ChatGPT four, was released this past March, um, and it has 100 trillion parameters. Um, so these the <laughs> These data sets and these um, systems are are huge, and the uh, the way that they've been trained and the the patterns that they're able to see just are getting larger and larger. Um, you know, and that scares you know certain segments. Um, and again, we'll talk about all that when we're talking about risks um, and challenges of AI. So the next. Um, AI generate, generator that we're going to be demoing and talking about today is um, for images. So this was also developed by OpenAI and launched last year, and it creates images and art from a text prompt. Um, and this Dolly has been trained on a data set of 12 million images. Um, so again, that's a lot of data. Um, we're going to watch a really brief video, and it's going to hopefully bring together some of these concepts um, and also talk about some of the limitations of the software in its current state. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the video on and we can take a look. Dolly was created by training a neural network on images and their text descriptions. Through deep learning, it not only understands individual objects like koala bears and motorcycles, but learns from relationships between objects. And when you ask Dolly for an image of a koala bear riding a motorcycle, it knows how to create that or anything else with a relationship to another object or action. The Dolly research has three main outcomes. First, it can help people express themselves visually in ways they may not have been able to before. Second, an AI-generated image can tell us a lot about whether the system understands us or is just repeating what it's been taught. Third, Dolly helps humans understand how AI systems see and understand our world. This is a critical part of developing AI that's useful and safe. The technology is constantly evolving, and Dolly 2 has limitations. If it's taught with images that are incorrectly labeled, like a plane labeled car, and a user tries to generate a car, Dolly may create a plane. It's like talking to a person who learned the wrong word for something. Dolly can also be limited by gaps in its training. If you type baboon and Dolly has learned what a baboon is through images and accurate labels, it will generate a lot of great baboons. But if you type howler monkey and it hasn't learned what a howler monkey is, Dolly will give you its best idea of what it thinks it could be, like a howling monkey. What's exciting about the approach used to train Dolly is that it can take what it learned from a variety of other labeled images and then apply it to a new image. Great. Um, and uh, that that full video can be found on the on the Dolly uh, website, which will be linked in just a second. I just edited it um, to make it a little bit shorter. Um, you know, the, the final generative um, software um, creator that we that we'll be looking at today is called Tome. Um, so Tome is auto presentation software for what it calls generative storytelling. Um, it uses um, ChatGPT and Dolly for its images and text um, outputs to create full narratives or single pages or slides. Um, you know, lots of potential uses for that in reports and itineraries. Um, and we'll take a, take a look at what that actually looks like just right now. So we're going to move on to the demo portion um, of our presentation. Um, I'm going to show a few examples um, for each um, software, and then I will ask um, any audience members if they want to throw out some ideas. We can look at those as well. And so these are the links to the demos. Um, you don't have to write it down now. Again, everybody will get a copy of um, this presentation. But I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Okay, so we should be seeing um, in Chrome, I have OpenAI open AI on a tab out here. 
and we're going to check out ChatGPT. So right away, um, you can see before we even start typing anything, that there's a chart here um, with some some warnings and limitations. It was letting you know it may um, generate incorrect information or harmful instructions um, might be biased. Um, and with ChatGPT, it does have limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021. Um, so asking it about anything that's happened since then, it's not going to have a response, um, or at least a response that would probably be, help, be helpful for what you're looking for. Um, and uh, lots of things you can ask it, um, creative ideas for a birthday, um, coding questions. So lo lots of, lots of um, things that ChatGPT can do. Um, you can see on this interface, um, these are um, some searches I've put in before. I've, well, they're not searches, they're prompts. Um, that, that's kind of a good way to say, you know, the difference between Google Google um, searches and what's the difference between um, putting in something here? Is it that Google is going to um, respond with with the websites, um, and uh, this is going to respond with um, newly generated um, text? And I just have to wake up my room. Only I can get some some exercise in. AI to make my light last longer. All right. So what I'm gonna show you um, on here is that I had asked ChatGPT for some taxonomy activity ideas for kids. Um, and it, it, gave me, it gave me a bunch of really good ideas, creating a bug hotel, a scavenger hunt, playing a, a, a game, um, you know, great, great ideas um, for kids. And then I asked it for teens. Um, and it actually had, you know, some more um, mature or, uh, uh, more age appropriate um, ac activities for teens. Um, and so I, I kept these on here because I think it's a really good way um, to show that the system really does differentiate um, and can be uh, tailored to very extreme uh, prompts. Um, so on uh, ChatGPT right now, I'm gonna ask Oleg, Oleg if there's um, anybody in the chat that has something they'd like me to look up. And if not, I'll make up something on the spot. Nothing in the chat yet, but let's give folks a second to, if they, if you, anybody out there wants us to prompt uh, chat. You, okay, so the, actually this is an interesting one here. A neural network explained to a fourth grader. Okay. That's actually a really good prompt for, uh, for, a system like ChatGPT because it, it does a good job of summarizing at various levels. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna new chat. I'm gonna do a new chat and put it in here. I had it as a follow up to the taxonomy activity, so that, that's it's gonna be a little different. So I just went up to new chat and I put in um, what our audience member asked: neural network explained to a fourth grader. So I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna end up reading all of this, but we can see it, it's just it's generating very quickly. Um, you know, it's taking it line by line, um, word by word, literally um, using that machine learning uh, technique to just predict what word is going to come next, and it it understands paragraphs and ideas. It's it's really amazing. Um, I'm reading so, the response here, and it's it 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 uses analogies to that are appropriate or more, more or less appropriate for a fourth grader um, to to combine you know neural networks um, the general idea of a neural network not necessarily the neural network of a computer but here it, is, it does talk about a neural network a robot's neural network so it's pretty good we had a we had a funny question here uh, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood I'm actually kind of curious what ChatGPT would if, if it knows if it knows that a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as, it, wood as it could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Let's let's see let's see what it says. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so it, it you know it recognized that it's a, a well known tongue tongue twister instead of trying to find a literal you know response to that. Like that's um, However, in reality, woodchucks also knows grad do not chuck or throw wood. And what a party pooper. So yeah, so pretty good. This is um, 
is all very uh i we could probably do one do one more um in chat gbt before oh. we move over to dolly um the and then at the here. end you know if if we have time during our q a portion we can always come back and and play with some more prompts in here um so there was there was one earlier um that said what are the risks in using ai and actually if you, i've i've done that one that's not i don't want to do that one now but i've done that one in, and it will respond it will give you the just the risks it, it doesn't it it's not you it know it's not a has it doesn't have a consciousness so it doesn't like it doesn't feel bad when you ask it about the risks of using ai but here here's a good one actually this is this is a good one for the asker and also for me personally because it applies literally to my life a uh, packing checklist for a camping trip with two adults and two toddlers okay i All did right. this like no. two yeah. months hey ago. there you go <laughs> Did you plant that question in there, Oleg? I did not. I did not. This is this is a fortuitous occurrence that somebody else put this question because I wanted to see how this compares to the checklist that I had created. Let's see. Okay. Wow. Oh, it's it said portable crib or something for we're gonna fit that into a tent. I mean, this looks like a pretty yep. good, it's getting stuck on entertainment and comfort. Um, yeah, it's, pretty, yeah. it's a pretty like, decent okay, list so here. It, it, yeah, ma making it think some more. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, this, I mean, this is great, you know, just, um, you know, how it organizes it in, you know, shelter, cooking and eating, clothing and personal items. Um, wow. I mean, this is, I mean, I haven't gone camping in, in years, but it seems like a pretty exhaustive list. Um, definitely need the phone. The phone when, when we're uh, we're when we're out in the woods. Yeah. Um, so great. So um, this this is ChatGPT. So if you've um, you know if you hadn't ever heard of it before, or you you had heard of it but had never seen or really knew what it meant, you know this is this is what it is. This is what um, people are talking about. Um, and you know, so you can see how it um, was immediately controversial in in that. Students were using it to complete homework assignments or write papers. Um, and so, you know, we've seen some um, education institutes come out with their own um, banning of ChatGPT and other AI tools um, for students. Um, it's all just a part of, you know, whenever we have one of these technological disruptions, um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna bring up certain issues that, that weren't issues before. Um, and uh, you know we'll we'll deal with that with codes of conduct and regulations, um, but I mean right 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 now this is this is all um, just really interesting stuff in 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 my opinion. Um, so let's uh, move over to Dolly. So again, Dolly works um, the same way as ChatGPT by inputting a prompt. Um, it also knows styles of paintings um, and different techniques. Um, so you can ask it. Um, th these are all just um, images that have been generated in the past. This one I, I threw on the presentation when I saw it, um, the oil painting by Matisse of a humanoid robot playing chess. I thought it was very relevant. Um, but these are all um, AI generated images. So I just wanted to show you um, up in, in my history. Um, I asked it the other day, a photorealistic painting of an otter playing the drums. Um, so you can see the, the various results I got. Um, you know, you can see that the drumsticks are not where they're supposed to be in several of these. He's e e eating it um, or, or something in that one. Got it like in his eye or his ear there. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, AI generated content is still working out the the features and, and bugs like this. Um, people with six six um, fingers. Um, you know, it's 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 getting to the point where that's going to be minimalized um, as these uh, systems keep learning. Um, but they're not they're not perfect yet. Um, and I just I thought these were all you know pretty pretty cute images. Um, and there's there's one where he's got both both hands and drumsticks. Um, so let's go back over um, and see if anybody has anything they'd like me to put into the prompt here. So what should we prompt Dal E to create? Put your put your prompt in the chat and we'll see what it generates, what kind of image it generates. So 
So we don't have any more right now, but how about, about, uh, hmm. Let's do- Right, a, like the, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Ermine superhero. E-R-M-I-N-E, -E, superhero. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I, I gonna have to go with a dancing millipede because I mean, fair. where else would we that's, see a that's dancing fair. millipede unless, unless AI generated it for us. So, um, so the image, the image prompts there. do take a little, a little bit longer um, to, but, oh, so we've got some millipedes. I don't know if I would characterize them as dancing. Not, not um, that, not that creative there with, with a, Dolly right. needs to do it better. Maybe, maybe we can do it as a, 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 a cartoon millipede. Millipede doing a waltz? I don't yeah, that know. might, that might be better. See, the prompts are really important because it, it even a different, slightly different word in a prompt could really make a big difference, but not this time. Maybe right? This, a, this, maybe is, this is very disappointing right now. A cartoon millipede? Okay. Ooh, someone's going to make me spell millipede, even though it's right in front of me. Okay. A cartoon millipede dancing? Let's, let's see. Somebody said a millipede in, in a tuxedo. The oh, tailor God. that has to work on that to create. Oh, there we go. Oh, all right. It's okay. A little bit better. <laughs> this is the tailor that had to create a tuxedo for him. Maybe all of those legs and arms. Ooh, that's a lot of intricate tailoring work. Can we ask it to draw a flying pink elephant? Okay. Flying pink elephants. This is a kawaii style cartoon of a cotton candy at a carnival with pastel colors only. That's a good, that's actually a good Give prompt. Some... There was a question if you created the art on A, who owns the rights to the images? Right. So, um, there is a section um, on OpenAI where it talks about. Um, uh, uh, the legal issues and um, and the um, I'm trying I'm trying to think of the word um, uh, and, and and we can intellectual we can property. Take, thank you. Yeah, and we can look at that. I believe I believe there are characterizes as, as for use, um, but I don't want to say that for certain because I don't know um, if that's a hundred percent. But we can look that up. What um, does this say? This generated cont contadon cut. What is that? It's interesting. That's interesting. It's kind of some kind of. I, I writing, think you're seeing. I think here. you're seeing more than. Hmm? Um, no, no. In the what's called in the, uh, in the in these images here, there's some sort of writing. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Oh, cat, cat, cat. I wonder. I, I don't know. Is that having to do with kawaii? I'm. I'm sorry. I don't know. What no, that kawaii means. just means cute. Um, okay. It's like a cute kind of like like Hello Kitty that cut that sort of thing. Okay, I was like, maybe, maybe it it learned that a lot of those um, images do have um, the font is right words and yeah, yeah. When you when you said hello hello kitty, that kind of I'm like oh, I'm like I could I could I could I could see this. Um, so those generated pretty fast. Um, sometimes it can take a, a little bit longer. Um, is there is there one more? I know there was there was a bunch um, that were that were coming in. Um, yeah, so I just want to let oh, people know that if, if I'm going to look right now, if, if other if you have questions that aren't prompts, um, go ahead and put those questions into the Q&A because sometimes people put questions into the chat and because the chat scrolls for us, you know, other people are posting um, that we only that only we can see. And so if you have a question that you post somewhere above, I might it's pretty really easy to miss if we scroll up and don't what uh, about birthday cards for different ages? Huh. How about like, yeah, let's do like a birthday card with a car for a 59 year old. While you wait, they give you a, let's they give you an example of, of another prompt here, a 3D render, but interesting. Let's see what comes up. What, 60? <laughs> 
<laughs> 66. Okay. Oh. Uh, it was a random 500 in that one. Up. Happy birthday. It's always Arthur. like it's I think with the with the chat GPT with the with chat it's it it feels a lot more like it gives the illusion of a lot more like you're talking to an actual human being whereas with Dolly it does not it you know that sometimes the stuff that you get depending on the prompt um the stuff that you get is really weird like there's there's it's normal normal and then very odd it's like that like like these right here like see so you have it you asked for a human obviously sees this uh, and we can be like 59 year old but these responses clearly are not uh like it didn't clearly did not understand what 59 year old meant it didn't understand that there was a number but not the not the importance of the exact number right the the, the context is is not being understood right um, not being translated no. into the image in the way that would be expected yeah so so um so this is this is dolly um again so um just a a, a word about these prompt um these uh AI generators is that most of them are at least free to try. Um, a lot of them work on a, a pay system after you get, you know, like a, a few, um, a few free um, prompts every month or so. It might work like on a credit um, basis. Um, ChatGPT um, has a plus uh, that you can upgrade here. You know, if you you know are really going to get into it and maybe you're using it for your own business. Um, but I, I don't have anything that shows the, the financial um, uh, framework for, for them because they're kind of in flux and it's it's all kind of starting now. But just know that most of them are free at least to try. Um, but if you start clicking around and it's asking for credits um, and credit card, you know, that's, uh, that's just something to keep in mind that it's they're often free to a point. Um, and so great. So that's that's Dolly. Um, the the final one that we're going to look at, um, if you remember, it was called Tome, and that's the auto presentation software. So making like a slideshow. Um, so th this is Tome. Um, you can see that I have 485 credits left. Um, you know, I haven't used this very often, so I think those are what came when I signed up. Um, I've only generated one. Um, presentation here. These other ones are showing up in my um, in in my history and in in my stuff, but they're they're automatically put there by Tome. So when I found out I was going to be doing this presentation, I like okay, well let's get very meta about it, and I uh, put in exploring the future of artificial intelligence, and got you know a, a really good presentation. Um, with it again, it uses the the chat GBT for the text and Dolly for the images. And it's um, putting the information, you know, together in a in a slideshow um, that you know that makes sense. It uh I could have made the slideshow like this. I, I specifically wanted to stay away from this. Um I <laughs> I still feel I still feel like it's cheating. Um, it's I mean it's 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 well I mean I guess that's a that's a, a question to ask. Um, but uh, obviously you know it's here for our benefit. Um, and so unless you're being barred from using it, you know, for by your school or 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 whatnot, it you know it could be um, a tool that you use at least to see you know what it comes up with. Um, so, you know, we saw benefits, challenges, you know, futures, impacts of AI. Um, so just some really cool stuff here. Um, now, does anybody want a, um, me to try uh, generating a, a presentation? Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what comes up. If there's any ideas, just throw them in the, in the chat. So monitoring the chat now for, oh, I see that somebody had asked this one earlier from the uh, from ChatGPT, um, how to play the flute better. Okay, let's put that in. And you can also see, um, I'm just trying to copy and paste that. You can also see that um, you can also create individual images or um, different different prompts here. I'm just going to go ahead and do create a presentation about 
how to play better flute. So we'll see how it's generating an outline. Somebody asked earlier for a, a, a political topic that's at the top of the news these days. And I, I just want to say that ChatGPT is actually a few years behind when it comes to its training data. So it's not going to be able to generate, uh, you know, the headline responses to headline news because it doesn't it doesn't follow headline news. So and it, Tome, I think, is is built on top of GPT or ChatGPT, not ChatGPT, it's built on top of GPT 3.5 or 4. So it, it wouldn't be able to respond to Nick news events unless you gave it all the information. Like if you if you fed it with the, a CNN story about a famous person, um, then it it might be able to respond to that somehow, but it wouldn't know what happened in the last two years of their life. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, so a limitation there for sure. Um, so we can see it, it um, has titled our presentation, Flute Mastery, Unlocking Your Potential. Sounds exciting. I might have to try taking up the flute. So uh, all these, I mean, playing with expression, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't know the, 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 the first things that, that if, if you're asking me about um, musical instruments or, or, or a presentation about that, um, but we can see it's, it's um, organized in a way that's, you know, un, easy to understand, you know, for, I don't know anything about flute playing, um, but this is really cool. Oh. Very good. We can we can keep that. Um, does anybody else have a, a prompt? They're just burning a hole, and they they really want to see what it looks like. We can put it. Uh, I think it's time here. for one more. We got a few. I'm I'm, I'm scrolling through them. Uh, okay, I was never expecting something like this. International fisheries management. I just want to see. I just want to see how how it does with that. It, I mean, I know that ChatGPT really does, you know, it can, it, it responds pretty well to off the wall stuff. Those, sometimes it makes up answers that aren't accurate, but uh, it's really interesting that you could actually give it some, some really, really random. And I have all sorts of random interests. So I've been asking it for the last, like, I don't know, last six months or something. I've been answering, asking all sorts of random questions um, and it does a pretty good job. To a to a degree to a point, uh, it does. It's not very good at being very very uh, knowledgeable about something. It it at a beginner level, it does a pretty good job. Cool. Yeah. So I'll I'll um never never knew any of this about about fisheries. That's uh interesting stuff. Um, so that that's that's tome. So that's um, those are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move away from from this now, and I'm going to go back to the presentation. Um, so let me do that one. Um, so we should be looking at those links again. Um, is that what everybody's seeing on the, on the screen? Yep, it's the links on the screen. Awesome, great, thank you. Um, so, so again, you'll you'll receive a, a copy of this presentation along with those links. You you can also um, Google these um, to find them, um, and then you'll also have a list of all of these other content generators. Um, you know, there's a lot out there. Again, especially since ChatGPT kind of kicked off um, last November, a lot more have kind of emerged. Um, just uh, you know, a caveat. I haven't tried these all. Um, some of them, you know, may have a free um, a free trials um, or not. Um, so just a, a warning in that regard. Um, but this is just you know, when I was looking at content generators, there was there are so many. Um, so you can you know you can you can do your own uh, search of the of the internet, or you can start um, on some of the ones you see here. I just want to. Uh, point out um, on chat. Um, uh, Google, so Google's um, 
uh, smart uh, uh, chatbot is called Bard. Um, and Bard does have access to the internet in real time. Um, so while uh, ChatGBT relies on, on data that only goes up through late 2021, um, Bard would, would know um, theoretically about current events and stuff going on. So that's gonna make it a, a, a different kind of experience as well. Um, so, so each of these is going to have different pros and cons and, and different ways of, uh, of performing, um, you know, get different results. But they're all using that machine, machine learning, um, you know, understanding that it's been fed a lot of data and is going to um, turn around and try to, to give back to you what you think you're looking for. So sometimes that works well with, you know, international fisheries management. Sometimes, you know, a birthday card for a 59 year old might not be something that that is uh, is coming up the way that we want it to. But again, these are these are all, um, you know, still the, the early stages of, of these technologies in the grand scheme of things. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So now we're going to move on to kind of um, risks and challenges, you know, no discussion of AI is complete without talking about risks and safety, um, challenges, ethical issues. Um, but just keep in mind, you know, entire courses, um, you know, books, uh, documentaries have been made about these issues. Um, and so we're just going to be barely touching the surface. Um, and if you uh, find, find it as fascinating as I do, um, you might be able to get some more um, food for thought from those news articles that um, have been posted um, and some of the uh, resources that I'll also be um, uh, going over. But first, um, uh, if you recall, um, in one of those first headlines, I mentioned the um, paperclip maximization problem. So that's just another word for um, this thought experiment um, that came from a philosopher in 2014. It's a, a small wall of text that I'm going to just read out loud. Um, and again, it's a thought experiment. So it's, it's uh, you know, what, what's being conveyed. Um, so suppose we have an AI whose only goal is to make as many paper clips as possible. The AI will realize quickly that it would be much better off if there were no humans because humans might decide to switch it off. Because if humans do so, there would be fewer paper clips. Also, human bodies contain a lot of atoms that can be made into paper clips. The future that the AI would be trying to gear towards would be one in which there were a lot of paper clips, but no humans. Um, so really, this is a, a thought of experiment to illustrate that we do need to be careful with how we specify um, AI's goals. And this is mostly in terms of the theoretical um, artificial general intelligence. Um, again, that would have broad person-like behavior. Um, that's, that's really where a lot of these ethical safeguards are gearing towards and pointing out that um, you know, we might create a, a general intelligence that's so strong and so person-like that it decides, you know, there's a, a misalignment between what it wants and what humans want. Um, so when, you know, we see the headlines about, you know, is AI going to kill us all? Um, th those are, those are you know, the ideas that, that computer scientists and philosophers and, and you know, people are, are keeping, keep, keeping in mind. Um, you know, the, these are these are actual issues that might come up one day um, if AGI is ever reached. Um, so another risk, um, some more challenges to artificial intelligence um, is that it's really limited by the data sets, um, the algorithms that we use to train it. Um, the data itself that we input might be biased or incorrect. Um, like we saw in that video, if a, a a car has been mislabeled as a plane um, that might, you know, disrupt our our, our results. Um, and then we also um, want to keep in mind there is uh, there are some AI systems and ChatGPT is one of them that uses reinforcement learning with human feedback. So again, another another tech term that you don't need to know, um, except to understand that that they use human testing in addition to the data sets used to train it. So they might, uh, there might be a human um, on the other end saying, this 
I like this response better and push the AI towards using that. Um, and I mean, that can be great for getting a more human, uh, more human um, perspective, but there's gonna be bias in that particular person who chose that response. Um, so who, whose values are being represented in the data? Um, you know, we might not think about it when we're talking about um, image generation, you know, you know, the, like the car, um, the, the, the auto playing the drums or anything, there, there might not be any value um, system uh, associated with that. But when we're talking about AI making other decisions or in the medical field, you know, um, they're making uh, pa patient decisions and diagnoses, um, all these just topics, you know, come into play. Um, we should just be aware of it. Um, and then, of course, there's always, um, you know, let me wake up my room. Um, apologize. There, there's also the, the actual human factor of, you know, purposefully misusing, you know, these technologies. Um, you know, people that acting in bad faith, you know, they might have their own agenda. So we've seen, a, you know, a proliferation of fake um, AI generated disinformation, you know, deep fake um, images, videos, audio, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a problem. And uh, the, the tech giants, you know, Microsoft, Google, um, they're all looking at ways to try and stay ahead of AI generated content um, to try and have like a labeling system um, when it when it detects something that has been um, generated by AI, but it's it's all just it's there's a, there's just so much and just so much um, going on right now. It's hard to say what you know exactly is coming in in six months, um, but that's something that we do need to be aware of it being used um, to purposely fake people. Um, and uh, another uh, risk ethical issue in regards to AI is one we've mentioned several times, and that's impacts on the workforce. Um, you know, so whenever we've seen um, historically disruptions with new, you know, revolutionary technologies, and, you know, we've seen it with the industrial revolutions of the past, um, there's a big disruption in society and in the workforce. You know, when automation took, took over, you know, there was a lot of, of job loss around that. And the expectation is that is that that's going to be similar. Um, you know, AI is going to continue to grow. You, there's a whole lot of stats out there. Um, I just pulled a few of them, um, but we can uh, see it's expected to see an annual growth rate of 37% um, from this year to 2030. Um, so these are huge numbers um, and just lots of growth. Um, you know, the the writers, the the artists, um, you know, are, are they going to be displaced? Um, all, all valid questions. Um, and while research estimates that AI will create 97 million jobs, um, it could replace the equivalent of 300 to 400 million full-time jobs. So it's not expected to create as many jobs as it would remove um, from the workforce. Um, so this is just where we need to keep in mind the ideas of equity um, and the digital divide that gives um, you know certain people and communities access to upskill and train themselves to take advantage of the new kinds of jobs uh, that are going to be made available you know in the tech industry um, and you know the the communities and the people that you know are going to be left behind without access. Um, we need to keep that in mind. Um, you just me, you know, I'm excited for the technology, but you know, there's 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 a there's ethical implications to it that just can't be ignored, um, and that just kind of brings us to the future of AI. Um, and I just kind of, uh, for me, I'm like, well, as we look ahead, I think it's also going to be a lot of looking inside. Um, you know, there's a lot of existential. Um, uh, a lot of existential question when it comes to artificial intelligence. Um, you know, it can be hard to define what intelligence means for us to begin with, or just intelligence in general. Um, you know, there's no single standard. Um, back in 1950, um, Alan Turing, 
um, came up with the Turing test. So you might have heard of that. Um, it's you know been a staple of sci-fi and and, uh, and technology since then. Um, but it's a, a way to test um, to see if a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior is um, indistinguishable from that of a human. So the idea would be that if a human is interacting with a machine and isn't aware that they're interacting with a machine and they're fully convinced they're talking to a person, that would pass the Turing test. Um, there's been lots of claims about that um, in the past, but I think that it's, um, it's a good way to kind of mark where we're at in the AI journey um, is keeping that in mind that, that these are issues that have been thought about, you know, since 1950, you know, AI wasn't even coined as a term until 1955. Um, you know, AI systems are in a lot of ways really good at what they do. Um, in other ways, you know, they're still learning like our birthday card, um, but they follow rules and patterns um, and they can match patterns, but simply matching, you know, symbols, you know, isn't necessarily a sign of true intelligence. Um, there's also the role of, of instincts um, in our behavior. These, these questions really get to the heart of what it means to be human. Um, and so, I mean, I'm not equipped to answer those questions and I think most of us aren't. Um, you know, and you know, what about sentience? Um, can a machine experience consciousness? Um, you know, philosophers have been asking these questions for millennia. Um, you know, what it means to experience consciousness. Um, you know, we can ask Siri how she's feeling, um, but she's just matching your inquiry with a pre-programmed response. You know, she doesn't have any thoughts or feelings, <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Um, and, you know, finally, can, can AI make truly original or innovative creations, you know, as we um, contemplate the creativity process? Um, and just um, finally, just a, a last couple news headlines. Um, the top one, some glimpse AGI. So remember that's the artificial general intelligence, this, this super intelligent, strong theoretical type of AI system that is like a person. So some glimpse AGI in chat GPT, others call it a mirage. The new generation of AI algorithms can feel like they're reaching general artificial general intelligence, but it's not clear how to measure that. And then below that we have, what have humans just unleashed? Call it tech's optical illusion era. Not even the experts know exactly what will come next in the AI revolution. Um, and uh, I think that there's some trends and some uh, some uh, ways that AI is being used that you know are going to continue. Um, you know the way that we looked at how that it's being used in the health industry, you know agriculture, all all those fields. I believe you know are going to continue to experience growth and help with AI. Um, but we do need to keep in mind the ethical issues, the biases that can be entered into the process. Um, so that even if we're not in the position, you know, if we're not computer scientists, we're not in the position to um, reduce bias ourselves, um, we can be aware of it, you know, and point, it out, point um, out the limitations to others. Um, we can encourage lawmakers um, and other stakeholders to see these issues because the the regulations and legal framework around AI is you know is just is just kicking off, um, you know uh, AI tools um, I think are ultimately going to be classified according to perceived risk. We are seeing some of that um, in the EU um, having a, a, a scale of risk from low to unacceptable, um, and so on. So again, these are really good articles. You know, I've just been able to scratch the surface of some of these issues. Um, the further reading in these articles just has some great uh, salient points. Um, you know, the, the mission of OpenAI, again, the, the creator of ChatGPT and Dolly2, um, is to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. And I think that that's something that we can all rally around um, and uh, do what we can to hope that 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 is how it proceeds um, in the future because it's going to perce uh, proceed anyway. Um, so just finally, we have a lot of resources, um, you know, with your LA County Library card, you know, some uh, books here, we can see Artificial Intelligence by John Mueller, Artificial Intelligence, Modern Magic or Dangerous Future by Yorick Wilkes, Four Battlegrounds, Power in the Age of Artificial Intelligence by Paul Schar, 
artificial artificial intelligence a guide for thinking humans by melanie mitchell um, all these um, books are available um, through our catalog um, we also have an online learning portal with a bunch of free classes um, some of them are uh, um, sh uh, shorter classes or short shorter videos um, like the ones here the linkedin learning um, just great just great content in some of these. I highly encourage you, if you're interested in the topic, to, to take a look at some of these. Um, we also have uh, Gale courses, which are extended um, weekly classes with um, actual instructors. And I don't have the dates on here because they had already started in June. Um, but if you go to um, that lacountylibrary.org backslash learn, um, you can see when the next courses are coming up. And the, we have Gale courses available, Coursera, um, lo lots of opportunities for further learning. And of course, you can always talk to one of our um, librarians, you know, by phone, text, um, email, or by chat, the instant librarian. Um, you can look up lacountylibrary.org uh, backslash contact us um, for more information about our reference services. Um, so that's what we have for you today with um, exploring artificial intelligence. I'm going to go on and uh, open up uh, for a q and A, I'm going to turn it back over to Oleg now and uh, see what we have. So we, have, we definitely have a lot of questions. And to some of the questions, I've got to say that uh, we can't answer them just because we don't work for open AI and we don't know what their company is going to do moving forward. And we don't, we're not on the team that created Google's Bard, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we're going to have to, I know that it's just kind of a disclaimer that like we're going to say, we don't know because, you know, we're, we're not, we're not uh, privy to some of those discussions that folks are having at those companies. Let's read quick. Can we access Coursera courses free through LA County Library? Yes. Yes, you can. Yeah, those courses that were on the, on those slides are are all actual courses that are available. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to choose from. Somebody said in the chat, this class used AI, yet definitely was definitely enhanced by Connor and Oleg. We might be generated by AI right now. I mean, Am I real? This Prove is, it. This is a Zoom program. I mean, would we admit it? <laughs> Have right, we been trained to admit it? Let's get into some of these questions. Let's side, sidestep that issue for now. Uh, is the information on my computer safe when using ChatGPT? Oh, well, the the ChatGPT doesn't interface with your computer system at all. Um, I, there are there, there have been some issues of people um, inputting personal information into um, ChatGPT. Um, and ChatGPT is vul vulnerable um, to cyber attacks and hack hackers, you know, bad faith actors, just like any other website um, would be. Um, so I would be very careful about inputting too, too much personal information. Um, but I would say that about most websites, um, you know, make sure that what you're sharing is something that has to be shared with that specific entity, you know, before you give out any information. Um, so yeah, good question. And uh, yeah, something to keep in mind that you're not, you know, giving out um, information that if it's hacked, it could come back to to harm you in some way. In terms of chat, your, your, the, your computer itself, like the information that's on your hard drive, ChatGPT doesn't access that. So it it's a, it's purely on a website. So it's, it's what you, it's like what Connor said, it's what you input in there. And uh, somebody had asked this before, uh, we're talking about intellectual property. And I think for those kind of questions, we're also gonna have to refer you to the open AI website or the website of whatever AI resource you're using because they vary. And the question was uh, when doing a writing project uh, and I, if the person uses chat GPT to help, does the, is does what they gen what it generates belong to them? And again, that's one of those questions that I don't know if Connor, you have more insight. I would refer people specifically to the ChatGPT user terms and agreements, and the for more details on the intellectual property. I'm I'm not in a position to give a a very good answer for that. At least a very useful answer. Yeah, I can answer, I'm but it's going to be wrong. Yeah, I'm 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 looking it up. I because what I what I have you know in my research, I um, 
I did come across there. They they are they are very um, transparent about that policy. I just have to find it. <laughs> well, let's let me get into some other questions while you look. So sure. Uh, is when you're typing an email sentence and you have only half finished and there is a suggested uh, suggested finish to or end to your sentence, is that an example of AI? That is an example of machine learning. So in a way, yes. And I, I'm sorry, I, I, missed, I missed the question. Did that's you, okay, did that's you... okay, I, I covered the question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if I, some, of these, some of these are easier ones that I can cover that that if, if this hard, I'm just going to say, Connor, I need you for this one. Um, so here's a, this is another easy one. Is the Bing AI chat the same as or powered by ChatGPT? Yes, it is. Yeah, Microsoft and OpenAI have, have a relationship. And so, yeah, Microsoft has incorporated ChatGPT into its Bing search. Um, so open, so open AI will not claim copyright over content generated. Um, that's what I found so far. Um, but yeah, how how to like attrib um, uh, attribute attribute word? Yeah, uh, um, how to give it credit? Yeah, like how to. Um, um, it's a good question. If I don't if I don't find an answer for you now, we'll we'll put it in the email that we send out next week. Um, we had a comment in the chat, AI work cannot be copyrighted unless significant changes have been added to it by a human. So that's, uh, we're gonna, let's add that as a potential option for folks. But yeah, definitely read the terms that are on the websites of the resource that you're using. So next question, is it available to in many languages besides English? And I will say the ChatGPT does interact in multiple languages. I know that because I've asked it to translate poems from uh, Russian to English. And I speak Russian, so I was able to vet the translation. It did a decent job of the translating the, a poem literally. Not The sound wasn't, didn't translate the, the music of the poem very well. But it, yeah, it can, it can interact with you in, in multiple languages. I don't know the limits of the languages that it can use, but popular languages... Yeah, yeah, I would I would give it a try. You can always ask, can you talk to me in, you know, uh, Turkish? And it, it might be able to. Yeah, tra translation is, is one of those skills and it, it, it's 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 one of the it's like writing and, and uh, you know, creative imagery that um, is uh, one of those industries that may be disrupted. Um, do you know due to it um you know translation services um through ai i'm sorry i i'm like oh i i uh i can say something about that while also um like i'm here that it's looking like the user owns both the, the input and the output for um most of these uh generative content but again you know like oleg said you know if you're going to be using it for something that you know is uh is going to bring you money or going to be doing uh, like a business purpose, you might want to make sure, you know, just double check for your own, um, you know, peace of mind, the, what you are and aren't able to do um, with what is generated on there. Um, sorry, just kind of jump back in. Um, so <laughs> the next question, uh, would, uh, what would be the best uh, way to free GPT to create a website? So I think the big big question is, can you use like ChatGPT to create a website? And I, I've been kind of going back and forth in conversation with one of our commenters about this. So the 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 answer is yes and no. So ChatGPT can't directly create a website for you. You can't say create a website for me, and it'll go into the world and make your website, and so then you'll have a website. That said, you can use. ChatGPT to instruct you on how to create a website down to the level of coding the website for you. Now it can't, it doesn't use images, so it won't be able to use the images. But if you say you have this, if you tell it you have this image, it's sort of this size, it can generate the code for you, which then you can copy into um, your code editor. So if you know nothing about creating websites, if you, if you are completely a, a beginner at web design, then even in that situation, ChatGPT can explain what to do for you in very granular chunks. 
so that you can learn web design from ChatGPT. But if you're a complete beginner and just want to use ChatGPT to create to help you create a website, it will be as if you're taking a class on web web design. So it's not as simple as, you know, what do I do? Because web design has a lot of details. So you will still have to do some learning outside of ChatGPT probably uh, to be able to make your own website easily. In those situations, I would say use a website generator like Wix or, or Squarespace that where they have templates where that way you don't have to worry about writing a site from scratch, which can be pretty complicated. All right, um, let's move on to the next question. Um, how would AI affect marketing agencies? I mean, I, I think that, you know, we, we can see how these technologies would be disruptive, you know, in that way, if we have, um, you know, if we're thinking about, um, you know, marketing, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, describing your product or, you know, getting it out there. Um, a lot of the tools could potentially re replace those, um, you know, just text and, and, and imagery. Um, but then, uh, you know, you're asking how, how it might have an impact on that. Those are ways that it might have an impact. Um, will it, you know, are, are people, are, are people, um, you know, going to be satisfied with the results of, you know, smart generated marketing content as in the state that it is now, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I think that, that there's a lot of potential for that industry to be disrupted um, as these, you know, tools get, get better. Um, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, it's hard, it's hard to say, especially, you know, if, if questions like that are being asked because people are involved in those fields, um, you know, no, nobody, nobody knows for certain, um, you know, if you are in a, in a field or, or, you know, you know, or your friends are in fields that, that you think might be um, disrupted or, you know, I don't want to say replaced, um, but, you know, disrupted by, by these technologies, you know, it might, it might be um, a good onus to look into upskilling or, or looking, you know, looking into, you know, um, uh, you know, you know your field better, you know, better than I do. So if you're worried about your field or you're not sure how, how it's being, how AI is being used or will be, because if it's not now, there's a very good chance that it will be in the future. Um, I would, you know, do the uh, a Google search. I would do some research, try to look for ways that you can train yourself to stay on top of any changes that are coming. Um, you know, make sure that you are an asset wherever you are. Um, I mean, these are, these are, scary topics you know the, this these are people's livelihoods that we're talking about you know when we talk about being disrupted and changes um and you know layoffs machines computers taking over your work i mean this is all like dystopian nightmares right um so i don't want to uh, like cause over alarm um in that regard but it's you know it's good to be knowledgeable about um the way that that your field is progressing um, to, to try and, and, um, you know, stay on top of any changes. Um, yeah, I would say when it comes to the field of marketing, communications, public relations, chat, GPT or other AI resources will undoubtedly become involved, if not disrupt the industry. Disrupt may be the wrong term to use though, because by saying disrupt, it has this negative connotation. So, when I said that ChatGPT or some other AI tools will become involved in industries, I think that's there's no doubt about that. How it will be involved, that's up to the people in the field. That's up to because who will be prompting the AI? It'll be the copywriters. It will be people who are in those marketing agencies. So it may change the way that that marketing and communications works, but will it be disruptive? That's really up to the industry as a whole to determine. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, could you ask Dolly e to make drawings from photographs? 
think a few people have asked that question. Like, if you can you upload an image and have it kind of work on that stuff? Um, I believe that's in the in in the paid version um, where you can um, where I believe you have to pay for that. Um, I can look that up as as well um, to make sure that that's a, a correct answer. Um, you you can. Um, I'm sorry, my train of thought just just flew away. Um, it, it was asking if if we if you can upload your own yeah. images mm, yeah uh, yeah, exactly. I, yeah i i believe you can because then you can ask it to you know customize that image um and change certain parts but i it those might be paid features um find so out there are websites so unrelated to dolly but related to ai uh work on images there are websites that will manipulate your photos so they will for an instance remove a person from a photo like you can tell it a section and it'll remove whatever is in that section and generate a background as if that person was never there there are also deep fakes which are videos which place a human a different human face on somebody else's face or just generate a whole person an existing person to say certain things those are those are ways that AI is using image generation to manipulate photos. So even regardless of whether Dali specifically can do that, that is something that people are doing with AI for better or worse. But if it comes to simple photo manipulation, like removing somebody or changing some of the elements of a photo, yeah, AI is already doing that. So there's a question here. Is there only one site to access chat GPT or DALI? How do we distinguish legitimate sites? So the easy answer is if you only go to openai.com, that's where chat GPT and DALI are based. That's the company that makes them. So you know that that is a legitimate site. However, there are many sites that are using chat GPT or GPT 3, 3.5, GPT 4 as their kind of underlying engine. And so they'll build on top of it. And so through that site, you go through, post your question, it goes through whatever code that site has. And then underneath, it's, it sends it to OpenAI and sends it to G, the GPT and then returns an answer, goes through whatever code and pops it up to you. So those sites may or may not be legitimate. I would just say, don't put in personal information to into random websites that say they're ChatGPT or Dolly or using ChatGPT or Dolly. And even op the OpenAI website, don't put in personally identifiable information in there. Just be safe as you would if you were talking to somebody at a supermarket. You wouldn't tell them all kinds of random personal information about you. And don't tell it to ChatGPT. Uh, learning how to prompt seems like our next step for us beginners anyway. Yes, 100%. Learning. I'm sorry, it was learning what? Learning how to prompt. Oh. Yeah, so how to, how to craft prompts in order to get the information, the type of answer you're looking for is, yes, when it comes to using AI tools, that's probably the most important thing to master, to become better at in order to make them work for you. So, and there are, are actually people who have taken on the role of you know, this kind of growing career, growing field of prompting AI. So one way that, that marketing agencies could, could change is that they could start hiring people who are really, really good at prompting um, so that, you know, they can, the person can prompt the AI to generate whatever content they're interested in. So absolutely. That's a, that's a question that had the answer already in it, which tells me that that person is already thinking about this in a, a deep and interesting way. Are there any explicit or subtle censorship issues? Well, that's a big question. That's Right? So, yeah, because I mean, censorship denotes, you know, there's an entity that's purposefully, um, you know, per keeping certain information um, aside i don't think that gosh i mean i mean the the um i i think uh the the heart of of 
that kind of question might might be about bias. Um, you know that you know right right now we're not. Um, I, I guess I'm not. We can see if we're understanding the question the same way. Yeah, there are um, many ways to 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 enter that question to address that question. Right, and I'm and I'm sorry. It was something and censorship. Uh, no, are there any explicit or subtle censorship issues? It's a really general uh, question because my response would be, well, in what? When? We're, what are we talking about? Is it in right. the responses that ChatGPT gives? In the way Dolly generates images? In the way Tome creates presentations? Are the answer is not no. The answer is yes, but what is the quality of that yes? You know, what are we talking about when we talk about censorship issues with when it comes to AI? And I think, Connor, you jumped on one of those issues right away, and that's bias. And it comes down to, or it doesn't come down to, one of the ways to think about it is the training data. What is the AI trained on? And if there is bias in the data that is trained on, then necessarily there will be bias in its responses so there yeah there's that's a subtle that's I don't know about censorship that's a subtle uh issue of maybe diversity inclusion that's that's a subtle way uh that that uh ai might discriminate or show some sort of prejudice whether it's subtle or explicit so that there are other ways to enter that, enter that question though. And that, that was, I just, I just offered it with, and you Connor just offered one way to look at it, but I feel like there's, there are, there's a library of books about this, this topic that's, you know, from when, the, from the beginning of artificial intelligence research, um, this is a topic that has been, that has been on the minds of people, at least social commenters who are, who are working on this topic. Right. Yeah. Uh, how we mentioned this already. How safe are ChatGPT and Dali? Um, they're about as safe as other websites. There, no, n nothing is impregnable. But one shouldn't fear on a daily basis that ChatGPT or Dali are going to be hacked. The next question: Would you show how to use ChatGPT to create a cover letter for a job search? There's actually a video on YouTube already, I mean, probably multiple, showing how to do that with you know prompt by prompt because it's not just one prompt. Um, that that would be multiple prompts in a series. Since, well, so you could do so. Con Connor can go live yeah, on Chat to, Yeah, do it. Bring it um, and, you could, and you could sure. say just can, can you write a cover letter? But then that cover letter will be really general. It won't really, it won't refer to your skills. A cover letter is so important um, that you would have to input, it would have to be a pretty large prompt if you're gonna do it through a single prompt. So this this would be, um, what, what was the, uh, writing a, a cover letter? Or a cover letter, yeah. So maybe like, let's, let's say something like, I'm applying for a job as a nurse, at a small hospital, you know, um, I have this many years of ex uh, 10 years of experience um, in this job. Can you write me a cover letter? It would generate a very gen still generate a very general cover letter. Um, but if you input information from your resume as part of the prompt and other things that you would include, you know, some kind of story from your life, something, something that you would actually include in your cover letter, then ChatGPT would do a much better job of structuring that information into the into the kind of the template, the general template of what a cover letter would look like. What is that? <laughs> Ten years, I'm looking for a new job. What? Um... Um, playing, can you write me a, write a cover letter? Right, H having the 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 right the the right prompt to to put in there, right, the cover, mm -hmm. cover letter. Uh, 
So at the very least, if you give it such a general problem, it'll give you a the beginning of what a cover letter would look like. So you can take that cover letter and you can edit it at, at you, but you can see what just an example. Right. Don't don't be like the lawyer from our first news headline who were it generated fake cases and you know those weren't weren't caught um you know that's yeah everything um, you have to you, you everything that that you're going to use for any kind of anything important that chat gpt generates you have to vet it 100 percent every every citation it's given me fake i mean it's when i've got asked it for book lists on certain topics it's it's come up with fake books like just books that don't exist authors that don't exist books by authors that actually exist and it'll give you like the date and the publication information. It'll just make it up. So, you know, that's why I, a little while ago I said, yeah, it'll give you like the beginner version of most topics. But once you get into like, like I've asked it to give me a book list by a certain author that I know a lot about, and it's just made up books. And I saw this, I said, wait, does this person write this book? And I knew that they hadn't because I'm very well versed on the author. I collect their books. And so, uh, it it just did that. It just made it, and then I tried to like press it and said, "Oh yeah, I just made it up. Sorry, my bad." Basically, I'm um, so you know, right? Like take take the grain of salt. Any factual so, information it gives you, right? So just uh, great, and then just just a uh, um, when we're thinking of this technology, you know, it's these are you know when we're thinking back to you know the concepts of of machine learning and putting in data sets. So it's predicting the words to use, like what's next, what's the next word that's, you know, it's going to be used. It's not necessarily um, looking for exact actual factual data. Um, you know, that's would maybe be like a secondary. Primarily it's looking to use language. You know, it's a chat GBT, these are those large language models. Um, so it's predicting what you want to hear and not necessarily cross-checking it um, with with a you, you know the facts of the world um, you know da data set um, and uh, and so the, yeah these systems are definitely not perfect you know I think that they'll continue to be perfected and have fewer um, fewer and fewer um, just outright <laughs> made up you know books and and cases and stuff. Um, but you know again these these technologies are limited by the data that we as humans feed it um and the way that you know we instruct it um so they're still very limited um in that mm -hmm. regard so speaking of limitations and perfection the next question is does it understand humor can you ask for irony or sarcasm so the, the i think the question may be formulated in an, in an imperfect way. It doesn't understand humor, but it, yes, it can generate humor. It can evaluate humor. So it understands right. humor I mean, like a computer understands in, humor. Um, I'm sorry? That was, I mean, it understands humor like a, like a computer understands humor. It's not, you know, it's not like ha ha understand humor, but it does understand kind of, it can dissect a joke. To a certain extent. Right, like we, you know, I think um, I think some of the earliest commercials for Siri, uh, you know, and Siri was the first smart assistant, you know, back in 2011, you know, Apple, mm -hmm. Apple Siri. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, you could ask her to tell you a joke, um, just like ask her how she's feeling, but that doesn't mean that she understands or, or is, um, you know, thinking about the nuance mm -hmm. of that. It's just, okay, well, I have all, I'm trained on all this data. I see these patterns. I know this is a joke. Um, and it's going to spit out a joke. Yeah. I um, think it's Siri though. They're they're just preloaded. It's just a preloaded list of jokes, like preloaded list of dad jokes. Oh yeah, GPT, yeah. Okay. It, it could come up with original humorous content for you. Actually, as as a as a fun trial, I asked it to rate a joke I came up with on a scale from one to ten, and it did. It rated it on a scale from one, and then explained why it gave that rating, which I thought was interesting. Because it did a pretty, I mean, if I can, the jokes I told it were, were purely dad jokes, probably like rated three on a scale of 10, maybe three as in the quality of the joke and 10 in terms of the grown value of the dad jokes that I that I had made up. And it did a pretty good job of explaining why why it was funny and why, why it wasn't funny really is, is, is the thing. 
So some people might find it amusing and rate it around. So, so this is, uh, as Oleg was talking, I was, I was inspired by what he said. And I, I asked for a dad joke. Um, why don't skeletons fight each other because they don't have the guts? I love it. I love dad jokes. Um, and again, be thinking of what Oleg just times. said. Oh, what are you going to rate that joke? Like, you know, I mean, you're not going to make it, it feel bad by asking these follow up questions. Um, and uh, uh, one of the one of the one of the features of, of chat GPT is that you can continue, you know, carry on a conversation um, and it's going to remember everything that it said, but it doesn't have any working memory. So once that particular prompt and that conversation is over, like all, all these ones on the left hand side, um, it doesn't remember what you said. So if I did a new chat and I said, what was that joke you just told me? It probably would have no idea. It wouldn't have um, any idea at all. There's no, there's no context for. There was no earlier um, in our conversation as far as ChatGPT was concerned. So the next question is, uh, what is the difference in using regular Microsoft Edge or Google, um, or an AI? So I guess the difference. What is the difference between a regular search engine and an AI-powered search engine? So and, well, it's it's kind of funny that that that's a good question because as soon as ChatGPT kind of came on the scene. We got a bunch of announcements um, that some of uh, you know our mainstay search engines are going to start um, uh, including AI um, in, in their results, AI generated. But you, I think with Google, you have to sign up for that. Um, I mean, when when you're searching Google, um, you know you get a lot of of uh, uh, the actual websites, but then you know you also get the 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 follow up prompts where it thinks um, or it tells you similar things and has um, pre-generated responses. Um, those pre-generated responses um, are kind of similar to, to the prompts that we're talking about, but they've already been thought of. Um, they, they've already been put in there um, by, by coders. Um, but I believe that that's going to be changing um, as we're you know, seeing AI being used um, in these search engines. But right now there is a distinction. Um, you know, there, there is a difference. Um. So let's see what the next question is here. Um, I think tools like Mid Journey is pretty, a tool like Mid Journey is pretty advanced in generating images um, to towards prompts. Dali is getting involved, right? Yes, yeah, Dali is, Dali is a work in progress. And Mid Journey is an image generation tool that also uses AI. That's one of the popular, AI generate uh, AI image generators. Let's see. So here's a good question: Will ChatGPT? And you think we just a little bit just now? Will ChatGPT give different answers to the same question a few weeks later? Um, and will it continue learning over time? Potentially, yes, and 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 yes. Um, you can you can make it give you a different answer immediately. Um, but you can regenerate any response. There's a little regenerate response button underneath any response so it can you can have a try again so this way it just refused yeah so like, i just funny. told you that <laughs> yeah. i'm an ai i don't know I right and that, and that is one of the that is one of the limitations um in using especially um if you again using the example of um if you're going to create your own assets like for your own company or for creative purposes um and you want to create something again, but in a different way, it might be difficult um, to get those same results. Um, to that end, there are um, there are specific AI generators, um, like for for video game assets, um, for for character creation or backgrounds um, that uh, that are more consistent. Um, there's just a uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's it's not guaranteed to be the same. Um, and yeah, the, the data sets um, are always in a, a state of learning. Um, you know, like ChatGPT is one of those um, services that uses human feedback. Um, so it's gonna have that, you know, in addition to the data sets that it's being fed um, to determine, you, you know, how it responds in the future. Um, so yeah, all, all interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Okay, so this is another legal question. So we're gonna see so if I use AI to create videos for my YouTube channel, is that legal? How many can I legally use? So these are questions we can't answer. Um, we don't know. Um, that's something that you would have to either, number one, check on the on whatever the a website of whatever tool you're using to check their legal, the, um, the le check for legal answers, or you might have to talk to a lawyer, uh, inductor property lawyer who has familiarity with the AI um, to really get a great answer on that. Because Connor and I can say yes or no, but really our answers wouldn't be very worthwhile to you in this in in your specific situation. I see somebody was talking about a prompt earlier. Is ChatGPT useful for predicting trends, market market trends or geopolitical trends? Is it used for what? Useful for predicting trends, market uh, or geopolitical? Well, the the chat I mean ChatGPT specifically wouldn't be at this point um, because again the the data sets are only going up to 2021. Um, but uh you know like uh google's bard is is more current and should have up to date um you know and ag again this is only like kind of the beginning of this um generative ai um you know re revolution all this technology um so i would expect um that to be something that would uh you know be changing um and you know, in the future as everything evolves? I think the answer is yes, in a limited way. So you can ask ChatGPT to predict a long-term trend for you, even without the last two years of information. So for instance, uh, if, you, if there are two countries that have a certain relationship, you can ask whether those countries, you know, what the, if you give the right prompt, you know, what, if something will happen or what what will be what is the outlook for the relationship between and it'll generate an answer for you uh, whether that answer will be useful is really dependent on how much context and knowledge you have to evaluate its its response because it'll generate information i mean it'll generate text for you and if you had known nothing about either of those countries or the situation there what it says will probably be pretty convincing but if you're if you have some expertise it could either be, huh, that's interesting. I never thought of that. Or that's a possibility. You already, you'll kind of already know whether what it says is a possibility. Or you'll go, no, that's it. This answer is a dud. Regenerate response. So, it's a, oh, go, go ahead, Oling. Yeah, yeah. No. I was, so I was going to say, in a limited way, the answer is yes, it can predict market or geopolitical, et cetera, trends. But, but, you have to have some context, some knowledge about the subject to know the limits of of what it does. So it's, yeah, it's really I, like and, I can do, I can predict trends about something I know very little about. Yeah, and in, um, in in my res in my research, um, I, I was reading uh, about how um, using these um, to play the stock market, um, mm -hmm. you know, and looking for for trends and and that way, and I'm. I'm way too risk adverse to to you know try something that like that myself, but you know I, I I don't know if you know if you're a complete you know newbie about the stock market and want to give it a go. I mean you know go for it. But yeah, I think anybody who has any training in 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 the investment and stuff might you know come away from the responses with you know obviously with with their own. Um, you know, with their own um, inner context for for what is you know it's telling you to buy, 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 or sell, sell, sell. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's just like with everything else we've been talking about. You know, it requires. You know, this isn't the be all end all. Oh, generation, all right, we're done. You know, we have to as humans with the actual, you know, intelligence um, to review and evaluate um, these responses um, and make sure that you know make sure that it's something that that we're willing to use in our own lives if if um depending on the circumstances or the context you know i mean i just got a great dad joke that i'll, I'll use in the future like that's fine like you know but you know maybe maybe low you know, stakes right advice. there i don't know like you know i mean i'm not saying i have any knowledge about wall street investment um but am i going to trust chat gpt um probably not but 
if you know something about it and it's kind of reinforcing something that you were already thinking, you know, maybe that's something that could push you towards a decision. Yeah, ChatGPT has the trappings of appearing very well informed about almost everything, but it's it's not. I mean, it's it's kind of it. The idea is that it's able to respond in in a way that a human would, but that doesn't mean that there's actually anything behind that response. Or there's any any deeper sense behind that response other than that it makes sense in text. That when you read the text, it it reads some way that it reads with some meaning. Is that meaning useful? That's up to us to decide. Now we're getting philosophical. I are, love it. Uh, let's let's get there's this next question is philosophical too. Are cum, are computers capable of original thoughts and ideas as humans are? Are humans capable of original thoughts and ideas? Well, let that sit. <laughs> Right. These these get to the questions of, you know, what it means to be human, um, you know, what it means to think, you know, think critically versus having, a, a, you know, a, you know, we still operate on instinct um, in some regards, you know, what what's an instinct versus a thought versus, a, you know, feeling. I mean, this is all being generated by our brains, our bodies. There's just so many amazing, you know, chemical and biological um you know realities to us as human beings that you know could we could we ever I mean is this a fool's errand trying trying to see if we can you know put our person you know attributes onto an what's essentially an inanimate object I don't know but that's 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 just why I you know find this field so fascinating is because nobody really knows um and I I mean obviously you know there's pop culture references, you know, going back, you know, you know, pretty much the the beginning of time asking these questions, you know, um, what happens when AI takes over the world? Um, if, if and when. <laughs> I'm not saying that's going to happen for a certain. Um, Be and, careful, uh, Connor. Obviously, I'm not rooting for, you know, our non-human overlords. Um, but, uh, you know, if it ever if it ever comes to that, I, I hope they've been trained on the nicest data sets possible. <laughs> Absolutely. I would say that it's just like when it comes to originality and the creative ideas, it's it depends on who's reading what it's what it's putting out. So, for instance, if you ask Chachi to generate a haiku um, and it gives you a haiku with autumn with the season where it autumn leaves. Now, this is something that's there are, if you know about haiku and the history of haiku, there's literally, you know, thousands, you know, of haiku with this, with this, this word. Can it, you know, if you, if you don't know that, then that what it's, what it generates will be seem very original. Um, if you know about the way autumn leaves has been used as a season word in haiku and the various aspects of perspectives that have been used around it, then what it generates may be just a derivative, maybe just kind of drivel, may not be original at all. So it depends on how much you know about a subject to determine whether it can generate original stuff or whether what it generates is original. I think that it can. I mean, I think that it that it can put things together in a way that somebody has never done before. And that makes it interesting. See, binary whisper, silicon mind shape. Oof. As a haiku, it's a, not a very good one, <laughs> but it's interesting. I, I but like it's interesting. API, I, I, I like AI. AI gentle gentle form. Form. That, that yeah. phrase is going to stay yeah. with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gentle this definitely form. uses you know visual. I mean, it uses sensory. Yeah, but so it's you know, it, it has the feeling of a haiku to a certain extent. <laughs> At least uh, Senru. Digital minds and wisdom sprouts minds. Good AI's dance of growth. Okay, all right. That's fun. Um, next one, does it provide sources? And not in a satisfying way. I think I think for some of us, the set, when I first started using the set, the most satisfying way it could have provided sources would have you clicked on a, some, a, some claim that it made and it goes, I found that out. I got that from blah, blah, blah. But indeed it doesn't do that. And if you ask it for sources, it can give you sources, but sometimes it'll make them up. So it's not in a very, it doesn't provide sources in a very satisfying way. 
sort of like a, it kind of feels like a black box sometimes to, in the way that it comes up with stuff. Right. Again, these are lang language models, um, yeah. you know, language first, you know, before the ideas and, and the facts. Um, mm -hmm. Predicting strings of, of, of words, just, just like our haikus that have been generated, um, you know, de definite limitation. Um, AI's with the use future of the glow. So what? AI's future glow. Future glow. <laughs> this one, this one rhymes, which is not a thing that happens in haiku. So this this would be I'd say the bad job, Jay. An interesting poem, not a great haiku. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. are all these tools only usable in English, or do the most of the ability to write logically and clearly in other languages? We answered that one before. So yes, they can use other languages. Um, do you think AI will affect small business owners like consignment shops? Undoubtedly, the answer is yes, possibly. I think to almost every everything that somebody's doing, the answer is probably yes, possibly. Yeah, I, I missed the I missed the I missed oh, the do question. You, do, you, do you think AI will affect small business owners like uh, consignment shops, etc.? Oh, and I, yeah, I, I I like your response. Yeah. <laughs> yes, possibly, maybe not tomorrow. As they like, let's add that on. Right, right. It's not, you know, there's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, especially in the, in the, in those links, and I mean, it just in the news articles in the presentation. But I mean, any Google search, you know, um, you're going to come up with a lot of doom and gloom and, and naysayers. And I'm, and obviously, based on the entire conversations that we've been having the last couple hours, I'm not saying that there's nothing to be worried or concerned about. Um, but I think like. I, th I think that we see a lot of that with any, you know, new technology or new ideas, um, especially ones that that have the potential to change the world, um, you know, like how AI does. Um, there's going to be a lot of a, a lot of skepticism, a lot of a lot of, uh, you know, gnashing of teeth of of possibilities. Um, and I just again, this, this is, this is, this is my opinion coming forward is that I just try to find like a kind of a, looking for the middle ground, looking for the, okay, well, this, this could happen, you know, um, but what's more likely to happen or, you know, what are the incremental steps that will get there? Um, and it's like Oleg said, like, this isn't going to, like, the, we're not going to wake up tomorrow and the whole planet is just different because of AI. Well, I mean, you know, really, really hoping there, you know, isn't some AGI out there just ready to wake up um, and take over. Um, but I, I'm being facetious. I think that um, that the changes that we're going to see are continue to be gradual and incremental. You know, we'll see the governments um, step up to start um, passing some regulation. Um, you know, in lieu of that, the codes of conduct um, and other, you know, ethical frameworks that are being looked at. Um, you know, there's been a lot of um, top tech people out there um, saying, you know, wait, hold on, slow down. Um, you know, do we want to be pursuing this? Do we want to, you know, do we, or if we are, you know, do we want to have some safeguards already in place? And I guess I operate on the assumption that you can't stop everybody from doing anything that is possible. So if they're is a way to continue working on AGI um, or trying, you know, to get to that super intelligent, you know, potentially take over the world. Um, that that's there's no putting a lid back on this. You know, that's if if that's if AGI is going to happen, you know, regardless of, of people following laws and, and everything. You know, I I want to be prepared and I want to know the implications that could come um, from that, re regardless of what you know is legal or not. Um, and that's I, just another reason why I find this so fascinating because it is going to to change the world. Um, you know, how much, you know, to what extent and in what frame, time frame, nobody can say for certain. Exactly. So the next question is, and we're, we're pretty, I mean, we're, we still have 17 questions and we're, we're getting close to time. So if, you know, we're going to do a few more, but, uh, we could probably stay here for another hour talking about this and, right? I, and I, I would, mean, but I have another meeting coming up later, okay. so I can't. Uh, so there's a uh, talk about, I heard a controversial A that creates music. Are you going to touch on that? If so, can the general public create music with no knowledge of music creation? Who would other rights to music created? 
So yes, yeah, so this is referring to the fact that AI has been used to generate the voices of known musicians and voices and also probably playing style of known musicians and create original songs using the, the vocal style, the vocal signature of that musician. And so, yes, I mean, this is, I don't know who would own the, who owns the rights. I think that's really what, that's really the, the part of the controversy. What, first of all, whether it's ethical to do that, you know, without the approval of the musician, uh, and also whether who has the rights, who has the rights to this, the, the vocal signature of a specific artist. These, these are, I believe, questions that are being discussed at this very moment, that are being considered at this very moment, since this kind of popularly available technology, or I should say this kind of technology has only become popularly available relatively recently. And so the legal apparatus that deals with it is catching up right now, as it does with all new technologies. So what do you have there? Let's let's hear let's hear some of that. So yeah, so this is this is um, uh, th this link is is uh, you can find it on the on the slideshow. Um, I just uh, put in uh, let's do a happy happy song. Legacy uh, by Energy Level. Um, this is less happy and 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 more. Let's give it a little more. Bit, maybe like very high. You change the energy level to very high. Oh, uh, there it goes. No, that's kind of a, that's neat, but the energy level is not very high. Yeah, oh, is, it, is, it, is that energy? Is that where how much energy there is in that? Oh, you see how we mentioned section, yeah, section. it's yeah. like by no, section. It's, I, 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 mean, it's, it's exactly right. About that. I, I haven't played with this really myself so I'm, I'm 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 giving no claims of, of uh knowledge on this um That's you know i uh i was just telling oleg the other day actually that i um was reading about how uh, paul mccartney is uh going to be putting out the the, the final beatles record um you know, using a, an old demo of uh, John Lennon's vocals that they were able to teach an AI system to differentiate because it's it's on an old cassette. It's, you know, really poor quality to differentiate between John Lennon's locals and isolate those from the guitar in the background. And, you know, we, we've had, um, you know, we've had systems and technology that does that. Um, but then to, to separate them in that way and then use AI to complete the vocals um in that regard is just it's, it's just really amazing um so yes there is definitely sound and music um and you know same issues where um you know pe people who have been you know the content creators you know you, you know thus far you, you know instead of instead of machines you know or you know wait 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 you know like um um you, you know pe people make music do machines make music and Apparently they do. Um, are they going to make music that people want to listen to and, you know, could potentially be monetized or popularized? I, I don't know. I am. Um, I, I can see, you know, I can see in the next, I, I don't know. I'm not great at predictions, but I can see, you know, there being a top 10 AI generated hit, you know, in the next few years, I, you know, is, is that, <laughs> and then, I mean, some people might hate that, might, yeah. you know, might think of that. Um, and the potential for that um, as, you know, taking away um, human creativity. Um, but these are, these are all just those, those philosophical questions. Um, and then, yeah, just in that regard. So this is a, a sound generator, a music generator. There's also video um, generators that I was playing around with a little bit too. Um, those ones have some really funky results. Um, you know, we, we saw some uh, some strange results in Dolly, um, but the the videos were very odd, um, and they take a long time to to generate, relatively speaking. Um, so I, I didn't have a demo of a video creator, but they're out there. I mean, I think any kind of popular media that we can think of, if there's not a generator for it yet, um, you know, just wait. You know, there will be, um, but lo lots of stuff to play around with. All right.
Somebody said, would ChatGPT be able to answer about intellectual property on ChatGPT? How accurate is it? And I, I respond, it, it would be able to answer, but it wouldn't be useful as legal advice. So it would right, give right. you an answer, but but you shouldn't rely on that at, at all, at all. I mean, it'll just gen. It'll just. Should I should write. I type, should I attempt to? Uh, no, I mean, I feel all like right, the, right. the answer would be, I wouldn't be very interesting in the sense of it like, because it wouldn't be useful at all because you wouldn't be able to depend on that answer for anything. I mean, it, it would be pure kind of speculation. Very true. So any, I think any of us would be would be able to answer just as well as ChatGPT in that situation if if we were asked to make up an answer about the legalities of using ChatGPT. Um, where are their jobs creating AI? That's a good question. And technology companies. So there's there's a lot of jobs creating AI these days in, in, in the sense of like dispersal, um, whether there's actually a lot of numbers of jobs, I'm not sure. But uh, the big technology companies all have people working on AI, so from various angles. So there's people who are programmers, like engineers, software engineers, who are writing code for it. There are researchers who are researching how it works and sort of the, creating the models. Um, there's data science folks, data scientists, data analysts who are working on um, analyzing responses and returning. So there's a lot of the, the GPT and other AI tools are fairly complex, you know, at its base. There are also companies that are building tools on top of AI. So like Tome, which uses GPT and DALL-E to generate presentations. Somebody had to write the code that allowed it to pull all that information and put it in, put it in a structured way. So yeah, there's various entry points into working on AI and AI adjacent jobs. Uh, is my information my computer safe? So we answered that one already. So I feel like some of these questions are are, coming, are have returned. Uh, what organizations are doing the most current advancements in AI now? So there's there's probably there's various ways to look at that in terms of what people are using. You know, like Google Bard, Chat, you know, OpenAI with ChatGPT and Dolly, MidJourney with some image stuff. Um, there's companies that are use, using using uh, creating advancements for regular people to use. And then there are also research institutes at universities and companies that are purely doing R&D and sort of on the very edge of what AI is and how AI can be used. And that stuff is probably on the edge of advancement, but not that useful for us currently. So I would look at universities primarily in the, in the R&D departments of the bigger technology companies. Uh, is there a difference between the free version of ChatGPT and the paid monthly option? Yeah, it's using about a different... 10 trillion, <laughs> about 10 yeah, trillion yeah. parameters of data. Um, uh, yes, <laughs> it's 20, the difference is $20 a month <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and 10 trillion parameters of data. Yeah, or, or, it's, well, I it's think better, it, yeah, it's supposed I to be it, better. It, yeah, um, I, I haven't used Chat uh, ChatGPT4. But the the um, what I've seen people coming away with it is that it's it's it, it's what whatever we see in ChatGPT it it puts to shame like that it when that last news headline that we saw that people were seeing sparks of AGI in ChatGPT like you know like I probably put the brakes on on that but it's it's supposed to be a very big difference um, you know if you were looking to to use this or incorporate this into any kind of work or, or field, I would um, definitely consider um, making that step up to chat GPT for, um, you know, obviously do your due diligence first and do some research. I'm sure we could go to YouTube and look for, um, you know, chat GPT 3.5 versus four um, and see what some of the, the differences are. Um, but it is supposed to be a huge improvement. So final question. I think that, I think this actually has to be the final question because we're really we're past where you do long Q and A's usually, but this one is I think has been one of the longest, which I, I, makes sense. The topic is so fertile. So here's the question: 
Are we close to having robots resembling humans? Simulants, if you saw the film, trained with the AI to help humans in many areas, like elderly and lonely people, etc., as companions, helpers at home, driving people, etc. Do you think AI robots will join society as equals in the next 50 years or sooner? So the first question is, are we close to having robots resembling humans, trained with AI to help humans in many areas? There is at least one on the market I came across in my, re in my research. I thought about including it um, here, um, and it has, oh, I don't want to say the wrong country, but it, um, it has, it was issued citizenship uh, to a to a country right um i was just reading about know. this a, a few days ago and i'm like I, I you know it's kind of a little bit out um there um but if we looked it up we could probably find it um there there are there's at least one um i think possibly two that are right now on the consumer market um and i mean for other reasons too i'm like ah, i don't want to put that in the presentation um you know um but yeah. they they exist and they um, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're out there and I expect, you know, to see more of that. I mean, that's really, you know, the, the ultimate, um, you, you know, Oli and I were talking about like cybernetics and um, like bionic, um, um, transhumanism, stuff in regards to, yeah. say, say again, transhumanism. Yeah. Like transhumanism and, um, you know, and putting, you know, the, the technology of AI and, you know, and, and wrote you know, robotics and, um, you know, organic material, um, you know, uh, and, uh, um, um, and AI and that, that kind of combinations. Yeah. I think that we're going to be seeing, you know, more of that, um, you know, robotics continues to, um, improve and, you know, AI continues to improve. I think the merging of those two technologies is pretty, um, is you know right for you know right for right for exploitation yeah there we go that, that's, <laughs> like, no, that's know, the wrong word there, really yeah. that right for growth right for progress yeah yeah um so yeah if that if that interests you i'm sure you can you can google and, and find find the some of those that are out there right now yeah, I would say my answer to this, to the first question, are we close to having robots resembling humans trained with AI to help humans in many areas? I would say my answer is yes and no. Um, so no, we're not that close because, uh, so AI is, is improving. It's still not great. It's still not great as a kind of a general, um, you know, credible source for information. Um, so, you know, there's that. And then, in terms of having a robot uh, physically in in that has that is able to complete tasks that you, that person would need multiple tasks that a person would need we're still also not very close to that we have robots that can that can do specific stuff like for instance folding clothes that's something that are that we'd want a robot assistant to help an elderly person for instance do but a robot that can fold clothes would not be the same robot that can also make eggs you're going to make an omelet those would be at this point very far apart those activities are extremely different and require a whole bunch of different programming and sensors and you know physical um implementation so are we close on that not i don't think we're that close on having a robot that can both fold clothes and make an omelet um are we close to an AI understanding what clothes are and what different types of clothes are and what an omelet is? The same AI, yes. Um, I think we're at least understanding in the sense of being able to distinguish them linguistically. So uh, we're not that close on having general purpose AI robots resembling humans. Um, do we think the, that AI robots will join society's equals in the next 50 years or sooner? Uh, no. Um, so do I think that we were going to have AI robots uh, helping humans with a lot of different things in the next few years? Absolutely, 100%. Some of the things that we do now, uh, we're not going to have to do at all. We're not going to have to be thinking about doing in the next 50 years. Some of the, some of the kind of the basic stuff that, that we spend our time on, like for instance, like making appointments, uh, that'll be automated. We're not going to have to do that. Um, whereas 
you know, where, where will they join society as equals? Probably not in the next 50 years. In the next 100 years? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's we're going to have to re, uh, reassess how we think about um, what society is, what citizenship is, what humanities, you know, what humanness is. And we're starting to do that now. And some people have started started to do that 50 years ago or 100 years ago. So humans have been trying to define ourselves for time immemorial. And this is just an extension of that. And it will it will continue. This is that that as that that well for both of us that, that those answers turned into essays and this is this is a yeah no, was a, was a, I feel like it's a whole that was program. a great send off like, I'm like yeah you know what yeah let's uh, talk I, maybe like, let's I do just, sixty yeah. minutes on just that question really yeah like because I, you know as you know as as that as that question was being asked and Oleg and you were you know going through the points you know I'm just I'm just seeing all you know that's how all the the um, dystopian you know, literature and, and movies, you know, begin. The robots yeah. are working alongside us as equals. What happens when they don't want to work for free anymore? Mm, um, paper clips. You know, how much life is going to imitate art in, in those regards? If, you know, if it gets to that point, I hope it's after me and everybody I care about are gone because, you know, then when, you know, talking about these risks and, and AGI and, and, AI taking control of itself and, um, you know, the paperclip, you know, thought experiment where, you know, if, if an AI were to become that powerful and have the ability, um, because, you know, uh, ha having an AI system that, uh, I mean, that is thinking or having intelligence about what it wants, you know, is very different also from it being capable of acting on those um, thoughts or intelligence. You know, that's why there's a lot of um, safeguards and talk about letting letting um, AI out onto like the open web and stuff. Um, there, there was a, a section of the of the presentation that I had to take out for time, um, but it's talking about the evolution of the chatbot. Um, and in the early to mid 2000s, there were um, there were several. There's a Smarter Child and then Microsoft's Tay. So you probably haven't heard of Microsoft Tay because it really did go off the rails. Um, and as well as Smarter Child, um, these AI chatbots um, were uh, open to social media. Um, and so it started incorporating um, those uh, social media profiles and, and, and everything into its, into its learned data sets. Um, and they really started spouting off just some really awful, like, you know, racist, um, you know, sexist um, uh, uh, tropes that um, we're really like the the worst of online humanity and like uh, online trolls, you know, pe pe basically the, the the worst of the internet, they they learned and became like the worst of the inter internet and imitated that. Um, those are really interesting anecdotes that, you know, if you are interested in, in that, to you know, to look up the, the evolution of chatbots and when they've been let out onto the, the internet. Um, you know, th those were those were just chatbots. There was there was no danger that they would be, you know, taking over the world or or bombing countries. But um, you know, put put a put a capable AI system and you know put it in the in in a in a space where it has the ability to to access nuclear codes, for example. Taking you know th that's a very you know that's a, a very out there um, possibility. Um, but will it seem that way in 30 years, I, you know, I, I don't know. That's, uh, you know, we don't really know. That's, that's why the discussions that we're having today. Um, and, you know, if, if this topic interests you, if it excites you, frightens you, um, whatever, you know, if you're having an emotional reaction to it, um, you know, it, it might, you know, um, behoove you to get involved and, in, in uh, you know, follow how laws um, are being enacted or, you know, show up to your um, local, you know, uh, com you know, um, city council meeting with, with your ideas, you know, what, what, what you can do, you know, as, you know, as us as little peons, you know, in this great big system, um, I mean, you know, of, uh, of our little corners of the world, like what, what can we do? Um, a, a little, not, not, not like maybe a whole lot, um, but we can, you know, be educated about the issues, you know, educate others, you know, we go home and, and you know, talk to our families about these issues. Um, 
you know, spread the word that, hey, you know, we need ethical AI um, safeguards, you know, in place yesterday. Um, I think that's a good one. I think that exists. That right there is a great sign off. You know, that, <laughs> there we go. Right. Right. We're that's that's right. the perfect place to <laughs> conclude. Now, so like, and, uh, and yeah, so like, I'm, I'm going to put a link to our post event survey in the in the chat. If you all want to spend an extra another two minutes, you already spent so much time with us. If you want to spend another two minutes filling out our post event survey, we would appreciate it. Uh, Connor, thank you very much for sharing so much about AI with us. And thank you folks for sticking around, asking your wonderful questions and letting us kind of letting us go off on tangents about AI. Yeah. All right. Great. <laughs> We'll see you all uh, next Thursday for uh, becoming an empowered consumer. Great. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.